What's up guys, Tim Little, welcome back to Tactful Bass. In today's video, we're talking about the fall transition, how quickly it happens, how you as an angler can realize it, and the baits you should be throwing this transition time. Let's go. Have you guys ever been on an epic topwater summertime bite and seemingly overnight your fish vacate the flats that you were on, vacate the grass line that you were fishing and seem to just disappear like ghosts and leave you scratching your head wondering where those fish went? Today's video, I'm gonna try and help you with that. I'm gonna give you some key things to look for and some key baits that I want you guys to try to help you guys catch more fish. Now, one thing that that happens with this fall transition is it happens quicker than most anglers realize. You know, it can seemingly happen overnight. As soon as those nighttime temperatures start dropping, the daytime temperature could be the same, but as soon as those nighttime temperatures start dropping, those fish are gonna start vacating the areas they've been in all summer and starting to look for their fall homes. They're gonna start following the bait. They're gonna start looking for hard structure. They're gonna leave that epic grass, that top water bite that you had, they're gonna be leaving that and going and looking for a new place to hunt and a new place to live. So two major things, the length of day. As soon as the length of day starts getting shorter and the overnight temps start dropping, that is when you need to key in on the fall transition. You know, you northern guys, it might be a little late for you already. It might have already started. And some of you southern guys, it might be a little early for you guys. But I want you guys to start thinking about it because it leaves a lot of anglers scratching their heads. Where did my summertime pattern go? And it takes them a few days, a couple weeks to figure out. Those fish are gone and they're going and they're hunting for bait and they're finding a new home. So today's video, I'm going to talk about baits, both shallow and deep and how you guys can target these fish during this tough transition. Cause it can be, it can be tough. You know, more often than not, I'm scratching my head like, man, where did those fish go? And how fast did they leave? It's so frustrating when you finally get out in the water and you're excited to get back out there and catch those fish you've been catching. And all of a sudden you're blanking, right? You're coming to the scales with an empty way bag and you're, you're dreaming of that first place trophy, but all of a sudden you're zero and you're blanking. So, Let's talk, with the sh let's talk about the, uh, the shallow fish first, and then we'll talk about the deep water because we've already covered it. These fish are gonna be sped spread out into two groups, your shallow fish and your deep fish, your ledge fish, your point fish, your rock pile fish. So let's talk about uh, shallow fish because that's what I'm doing today. I can't em emphasize reaction baits enough. This is the time of the year where those fish are aggressive, those bait balls are schooling up, those fish are corralling that bait fish and you need to be covering water looking for those fish actively feeding. So what we got here, we got kind of a back, back of a bay, got some outside grass lines. Turn over here so you guys can see. Some outside grass lines and this is the type of stuff these, summer, or these, these summertime fish are going to be really transitioning into fall and moving the bait to the back of these types of coves. So summertime, you're gonna be throwing a frog out here on this weed edge, be throwing a frog on a mat, uh, you're gonna be punching, flipping. All that stuff still applies, except for those fish are gonna be moving deeper into the cut. They're gonna be corralling that bait fish back as shallow as a foot of water. So back here in this cove, we got an outside grass line, got some clear water in the back. As the nights get cooler and the days get shorter, these fish are gonna corral these fish all the way to the back. So, a square bill. This is a phenomenal bait this time of the year. I love the Lucky Craft, the BDS 3. It is a silent square bill, and I can fish it very, very aggressive out on this sparse grass. You know, as this grass starts dying, that is gonna trigger these fish to pull off of the grass and look for harder structure. They're gonna look for trees, dock pilings, hard ground, uh, pea gravel, chunk rock, rock piles, that sort of stuff. They're gonna look for thicker grass patches. So out here, if you see a grass patch that looks like it's dying, but you see another patch that's nice and green and lively, all these fish are gonna pull to that grass patch. All those fish are gonna pull as that grass patch starts dying, they're gonna pull off that and they're gonna pull to the, 
nearest lay down, nearest dock piling, because that's where they're gonna start figuring out where they want to live and hunt during the fall and into winter. So burn, 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 pause. Burn, 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 pause. When you hit grass, you're gonna pop it and rip it through. You're gonna fish this very, very, very aggressively because these fish are wanting to feed. They're gonna be chasing bait and looking for an erratic meal. So a square bill, this time of the year, as we go back into the backs of cuts and shallows, I'm throwing a square bill. Now my number two square bill that I'm gonna throw is gonna be some kind of square bill that has a knocker. You know, this BDS is silent. If I'm not getting bit on that, I might switch over to like a biggie, something that has a single rattle in it to uh, get more drawing power. But typically I start out with a silent square bill. Again, very, very aggressive. As you're coming through that grass, you're popping and ripping, and you can feel that, that bait vibrating. See that right there? That fish just boiled. Oh, I'm fouled. You get real erratic with this thing, and you can create those reaction bites, even in the middle of the day when the fish don't want to bite. So I'm kind of keeping my rod tip up. I want this square bill just, just ticking the tops of the grass. I want it reacting and deflecting off of the grass. Ooh, there's a good one right there. I don't know if you guys heard that or not. This cove is starting to come alive. Before I get too sidetracked, let's talk about some other baits that you need to be fishing this time of the year. So shallow fishermen, again, reaction, reaction, reaction. If you're fishing grass, Look for that lively ur grass. You don't want to be fishing the stuff that looks like it's dying brown because the fish are going to be vacating that. I always have a few different topwaters tied on. Typically, I will have some kind of walking frog, something that I can fish on the thick grass. And then I will also have some kind of toad style frog or something that I can fish over the tops of grass very quickly. This is that Tekel, this is the Sprinker Frog. It's pretty much a weedless whopper plopper. So you can fish it very quickly. You know, a lot of times you need to be covering lots of water. You wanna cover this whole bay to see where these fish are, are positioned. So I typically have two types of frogs tied on. That way I can go fast, I can go slow. Once I find that mat where they are all congregated in, that is where I will work that frog very slowly through. Or I will bring out the, the punch rig. This is where I can punch that real thick vegetation and really pick it apart to get those fish that are congregated in that grass patch. And I can really put the hammer to them with the, with the flipping stick. That's an ounce and a half tungsten paired up with a skirt and a sweet beaver. So as we cover the backs and, you, and you're paying attention, you're looking for boils, you're looking for blow ups, you're looking for bait fish jumping out of the water, you're looking for birds diving, pay attention to your surroundings. But this is typically where those fish are gonna go as they push that bait shallower and shallower to corral it to uh, really feed up for the winter time. Now, if you can find a cove like this where the, the middle channel or the, the center of this is deeper, that is gonna be a better cove than a, something that's shallow all the way to the back. If they have a highway or they have a, a freeway that they can kind of push that bait from open water, kind of corral them in that deep water and then move them up shallow, but your cove has deep access really quickly to the back, that is where they're going to mainly be. Because as the, the fall kind of starts coming in full swing, you get storms, you get bad weather, and those fish can drop back down and they're not as affected by that, the weather change as much as they would if they were in a foot of water. Now, one thing I would like to add about like the TVA system and uh, actually out west where a lot of our reservoirs can drop to up to 100 feet or more, you know, out here on the TVA, they start pulling that water back 
and uh, winter pool. So a lot of these big flats where these fish will be in the very back pushing bait, a lot of this water will be drawn back and it's just gonna leave these deep channels. Again, you're gonna, you're gonna fish them the same way. As soon as that water line is right here, that is gonna be the new shoreline. That is where those fish are gonna push those, those bait balls up against. You see you got a little, little hole right here. The fish might congregate right here. You know, they had those fish pinned back in here, but as that water recedes, now those fish are gonna be right here. And again, out west in those reservoirs, when <clears throat> you know, the water drops 50, 100, 150 feet sometimes, those fish are still gonna use those creek channels, those river arms, the backs of pockets. They're just gonna use the new water line as the shoreline and still push the bait fish up against the back of the new water line, the new shoreline, and they will congregate there. They will pin those fish, those bait fish, in the backs of those cuts, and they will sit on them and feed on them all fall. My number one favorite bait for targeting those offshore fish is gonna be a crankbait. Now, we've covered this in previous videos. We've talked about Google Earth, we've talked about uh, mapping, how to figure out the best places. A lot of this work you can do from home, from the computer, but for offshore fish, have some kind of offshore structure, your rock piles, deep wood, that sort of stuff. A lot of this stuff that I'm covering is primarily based on bait fish. Again, those shad balls, depending on what fishery you're fishing, the bait fish that it has in it, that is something you need to figure out with what your fish are chasing. You know, if your, fi if your fishery doesn't have shad, start thinking about a jig or crawdads because that is primarily what your fish are gonna feed up on and I would go deep for that. So if you are a crawdad fishery, I would go deep and I would look for offshore rock piles near main lake points and big cuts that lead back into coves like this. Now the two best baits that you can throw for those fish, in my opinion, I got two, uh, two add-ons, but it's gonna be these guys right here. A jig and a crankbait. Now typically a crankbait, I'm gonna keep it fairly simple. I'm gonna throw a, a 10XD, that's gonna be the, one of the deepest diving crankbaits. I can get that thing down 20, 25 feet, or a 6XD, a little bit shallower bait. I can move it very, very quickly and cover those offshore rock piles. Now colors, I keep it very, very simple. Typically I will throw a shad colored bait, a natural colored bait, or a chartreuse and blue colored bait, unless I'm in a crawdad lake. Then I will go with some kind of crawdad pattern. As far as the jig, that's pretty self-explanatory. You're not gonna be able to fish it as fast, but what I want you to look for I want you to look for rock piles that are out off of a tapering point that have deep water access. And if you can find one that has a deep grass line, that is money. You can fish this, this jig out on that deep grass line. You're gonna let it fall and you're gonna fish that grass line because those fish are gonna trigger on the crayfish. Again, if you don't have shad, think crawdads because that is primarily their food source. So a jig, I typically fish a heavy jig. Half ounce, even three quarter, because I can fish it very aggressively. I, you know, the water's still warm. These fish are wanting to feed up. They're wanting to get fat and feed up for winter time. So you can fish it very, very erratic. You can pop it, you can hop it, get real erratic with it, especially on the grass lines. Now, the two other baits that I wanna to talk to you guys about real quick and we'll wrap it up because we got, <laughs> got some lightning coming in. A flutter spoon. If you guys are on a shad fishery, a bait fish fishery, there's not a better bait that mimics a dying bait fish. So as these bait fish are schooled up and these bass are corralling them, you know, you got the little bass up top just blowing up on the fish. You got the big fat lazy ones down below the the school, as those little ones are up there massacring that bait ball, they leave wounded shad that kind of fall to the bottom and nine times out of 10, you're gonna get your bigger bite below the bait ball. And one of my favorite baits to throw through a bait ball 
is gonna be a flutter spoon. You're gonna fire this out. You're gonna walk it down with a semi-taut line and that bait's gonna be falling through. Pop it, let it fall. A flutter spoon in the fall is often an overlooked bait, but it can be lights out and it is one of my favorite ways to catch them. If you guys haven't seen a video on how to fish a flutter spoon, I will link one down below in the video description. I've done, I don't know, one or two in the last couple of years on how to fish them, but don't forget about the flutter spoon and one more for you. You guys saw me fishing this recently in a video. This little guy, this is actually a tail spin. Now this is a three quarter ounce bait. So offshore fisheries, when those fish have that ball pinned, that bait ball pinned, and are just annihilating them. You'll, you'll see them on the electronics and they're just blowing up on them. Bombs are going off. You take this, this tail spin, three quarter ounce, and let that thing fall through. It's almost like spoon fishing, but it has a blade on the bottom, the back of it. it. Gives a lot more flash and a lot more feel. So you can fish this, you can cast this thing out and reel it back. You can rip it and let it fall. You can fish it like a spoon, but this is another bait that has produced a lot of fish for me. Some big fish, I think I've caught fish up to seven, maybe eight pounds on this little guy right here. It's just a, a do nothing bait. It just falls and looks like a bait fish and you can catch those bigger fish that are down through that bait ball with this guy right here. So to wrap it up, I don't know if you guys can hear that thunder. And uh, I mean, I love the weather out here. It's, it seems like every 20 minutes the weather changes, but uh, this time, this summertime, this fall transition, don't get left behind with where the fish are going. As soon as those nights can start getting shorter, as soon as those temps start dropping, and I'm not going to give you a certain temperature. Just pay attention. As soon as they start, as soon as they start dropping, start thinking about where your fish are going to go. It's all based on on bait fish. So those bait fish are going to be pulling off. Those bass are going to be pulling off. They're going to be looking for their their winter haunts, where they're gonna stay for the winter. So look for, for good, healthy grass. As that starts dying off, look for the hard structure. Look for those stumps, those rock piles, those laydowns, the dock pilings. They want that hard surface to kind of butt up against and use so they can ambush their bait. As that bait comes to them, they wanna be sneaky and they wanna get that bait. So that is the shallow fish. The deep fish, cranking, flutter spoon, uh, you know, if they're blowing up on surface, you can throw a top water, but look for those deep channels that are leading to the main lake points that have rock on them that look like the absolute best spot on the lake. And that is where you're going to find those fish all the way through wintertime. These baits right here, I will link them all down below in the video description, but these baits right here will produce a lot of fish. Again, it is time to get aggressive. It is time to burn that crankbait rip that flutter spoon, hop that jig, because those fish are active. They're wanting to kill, they're wanting to eat. You guys will put a lot of fish in the boat with these guys right here. If you guys have any questions, please leave it down below in the comment section. Matt and I will try and get to those. If you guys like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Remember to subscribe to our channel. We do three videos a week for you, sometimes more, to help you guys catch more and bigger bass. As always, we appreciate you. Have a good one.